Okay, so back in the era when this Mini was built, and beforehand, a lot of the distributor units had items called points and condenser. Now, I'm not a great lover of condensers. They used to fail quite a lot back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. The quality, in my opinion, isn't even as good as what it was. So what a lot of people do is they change over to a modern electronic ignition unit and then you can completely replace the points and condenser. It becomes a much more powerful spark. It means you can open the points gap, sorry, the spark plug gap very slightly as well. And they're altogether vastly more reliable. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now for the little red mini, knowing that the engine runs well, it seems fine, because I want to give that client uh, more reliability, more go-to fun factor that it will start at the turn of the key every time. So first of all, I'd like to just show you what points and, and condenser looks like compared to an electronic ignition unit. So firstly, this is an old fashioned pair of points and condenser. When the distributor rotates, driven by the camshaft deep down in the engine, there's a square drive which rides on the little red arm here. When it gets to the corner of the square drive, it pushes and forces these points to open and close. And they provide continuity of spark through to the spark plug and of course the, this, the gap between. Now this little round silver barrel unit is a condenser. When they start to fail, they can completely fail and the car will not start. They can start running very lumpy, very juttery. They're, they're real, uh, a real nightmare to live with, I'd say. So my preference is always to move towards something like this electronic ignition unit here. The central hub has a very small magnet within. And as the magnet rotates past this inductor, it then feels a pulse and that is the position at which it sends a spark through to the spark plug for the ignition to take place. Now the distributor unit here at the side is looking at the marking 100AY. I know that to be an Alden yellow um, distributor. So the weights inside give the advance curve for Alden yellow performance. And as you can see here, it already has the electronic ignition system installed. Again, the owner of this probably wanted that additional reliability, that additional spark intensity, that additional performance. So that's exactly what we're going to do now to the little red mini. Still way too advanced. Because that's about where she should be. You see how the RPM drops down? And it's still at the start at that level, you see. So I've got it there, right. Make sure that's returned back to zero. Which means throttle sticking down there. Right, that's about where she should be now for idle. So, we've removed the points and condenser and we've now installed an electronic ignition module. It would be far superior for all the reasons we described a little earlier, mostly about more intense spark, better reliability and removing that little troublesome condenser that the quality isn't great these days. So now we've got the car ticking over idling. It's idling at about 900 RPM, 930, 950. 
I'm going to go ahead and set the ignition timing to the right mark. I believe on this car, this engine, by manufacturer, is at about 1500 RPM. So, I'm going to just jump off camera for a moment and I'll set that up ready to go. It'll still. Goes near as damn it, 15 inches out here. And it's vacuum removed. But we must blank the vacuum also. So now I'll need to return it back to 1500 RPM because the extra advance given by the advanced and retired unit. Now we'll drop down on the RPM again. Make sure the throttle is returning. Close enough to 1500 RPM. Drop down the ignition, the idle speed, sorry. That's about where it needs to be before we go on to do the mixture adjustments. Okay, so I'll just put things back together again. You'll hear the RPM go up when the advance comes on. And we'll tweak the idle speed back down again. Okay, that'll do for now. Okay, so we've set the ignition at a pretty good benchline figure. It's now time to move our focus over towards the carburation a little bit to make sure that everything's running synchronized as it is. A quite common fault you find on minis, MGs, any car built with the old SU carburetor is the dashpot piston quite often runs dry. Now it's needed to give a hydraulic resistance to the raising of the piston and how much and what needle profile it presents to the jet but also it adds stability especially on deceleration so when you put your foot back down again uh, you lift it off the gas the SU piston returns back to the correct position at the correct rate of fall I'd almost put my bottom dollar when I lift off the SU dash pop here There'll be next to no oil inside this dash pot. And when I lift up, I should feel a resistance around here before I push it back down. And there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I'm going to refill this with an SAE 20 grade oil, which is exactly what is recommended by SU carburetors. Different climates, different running, different setup may require different, but that's the benchmark oil to use, an SAE 20.
So let's see what we've got in there now. So we should feel resistance. A little more oil required. Let's see how we're doing now. Nearly there, just a little more. And hopefully... There we go, now we've got a resistance. And we'll nip that back up in place. That's one little element of the carburation. Now taken care of. That'll be good for 6,000 miles, 8,000 miles, all good to go. Let's give the hands a little wipe. Okay, so here we have a HS4 SU carburetor. Very, very similar to what's fitted on this car. When we come to adjust the mixture, what we're actually doing is controlling where the needle is relative to the jet, and vice versa. At idle, we're controlling where the jet is relative to the needle. Now, if you just want to take a little look, this is an old jet I've removed. So the fuel would come in from the SU float ball, it would come up this jet, and this is 0 0.09 inches in diameter. Now, held by the SU piston, the needle goes inside this jet. And as you can see from the taper end, it's very fine, to the top end, it's much wider. And this is done at a calibrated way. And there's many, many different gradients uh, and profiles of needles. So at idle, we're almost at a position like this here with very little space between the jet and the needle because we don't need a lot of fuel to come through. Now, when we put our foot down, we wish to accelerate. The, air, the engine demands air, it lifts the SU piston, and then we present a finer area of the needle relative to the jet. And that allows more fuel to come through and allows us to run nice and smoothly. So what I'll quickly do here is show you what it's like inside this HS4 carburetor. We'll start by taking off the dash pot. Just break these loose a little at a time. Before then, you can remove them the full way. Please bear with me, it'll only take me a few seconds more. And here is the SU identity, identity tag as well. If these remain original, we can tell every component that should uh, be part of a full system within this carburetor. So there we go. Now I'll lift this dashboard and inside is a piston, a spring and the damper we mentioned earlier. So as I lift, you'll see the spring that presents downward pressure for the closure of the SU carb. Here is the piston, and of course, here is the needle. Now, the needle presents itself relative to the jet inside. The important part at idle is the outer brass collar here it's the relevance of this position to the jet. That's the amount of fuel we're allowing to come through at idle. And on the Mini, behind us, we're going to set this up to exactly the right level. My thought at the moment, I think it's running a little rich, but we'll prove that showing another method also. So that's the, the needle, the jet, the jet bridge, and controlling those gives us our idle mixture. So, I have my thoughts that this little engine here is running a little bit rich. A good way of finding that out quite quickly, quite visually, is using a colour tube glass spark plug. And just like the old days being back at school, if you didn't have enough oxygen to fuel in the ratio, you have a yellow, orangey, sooty flame. The glass spark plug will allow us to see that occurring inside. So, just take a look inside here. You can see it's running rich. So 
what we're going to do now, we're going to tweak the height of the jet relative to that of the needle and we're going to get this much closer to where it needs to be for this to run at its optimum, at its most efficient and of course relative to E5 and E10 petrol grids because the stoichiometric balance is not what it used to be in the past. So, I'll crack on and do that right now. <laughs> 